okay students so, so this is next model actually this is meant for our midgut rotation so this is the midgut loop okay so already you know that it is herniating into the your umbilicus so this is the your physiological hernia so it is meant for our midgut okay so initially you know that midgut is herniating into the umbilicus to form hernia that is called as physiological hernia initially midgut loop will be formed the artery of midgut already you know this is your superior mesenteric artery okay that superior mesenteric artery divides the midgut loop into periarterial segment actually this is periarterial segment this is post arterial segment of your midgut loop okay so first it herniates into the umbilicus that is called as physiological hernia after that the rotation takes place i already you know that 270 degrees rotation in anti clockwise it takes place three times first 90 next 90 third 90 now this is our physiological hernia already you know that so this periarterial segment so this is the periarterial segment why i am telling this as periarterial means that only undergoes coiling coiling to form our small intestine so your jejunum and ileum is formed from the periarterial segment that only undergoes coiling next the post arterial segment it is not undergoing any coiling so this part of your uh, post arterial segment forms your cecal diverticulum so this is our cecal diverticulum or cecal bud from that we will be having development of cecum as well as appendix the remaining part if you see it is tubular there is no coiling formation here so this part after the reduction of physiological hernia into the abdomen it reaches the level of your just below the liver it will come the cecal bud later on that cecal bud from there descends downwards to the right iliac fossa that only leads to formation of your ascending colon now the remaining part will form the right two third of transverse colon so if you go to the midgut derivative so it starts from the distal half of duodenum that is distal to the opening of your bile duct so remaining part of duodenum jejunum ileum next ileum opens into the cecum next your cecum and appendix then ascending colon right to third of transverse colon so that is the derivative of our uh, mid midgut so the artery of midgut is your superior mesenteric artery like that artery of foregut is celiac trunk artery of hindgut is your inferior mesenteric artery so this model is mainly for your gut rotation so that is your midgut so it is herniating into the umbilicus to form physiological hernia later on it is getting reduced so re entry is called as reduction reduction of hernia so it is entering into the abdominal cavity if there is any failure of reduction of physiological hernia that leads to amplosis okay so that is your midgut rotation so you should be able to tell about that theory so totally 270 degrees rotation takes place first 90 degree next 90 then third 90 that is in anti clockwise direction so this is your pre arterial segment this is your post arterial segment or otherwise this is called as cephalic limb this is called as caudal limb okay cephalic limb only undergoes coiling to form jejunum ileum the caudal limb only your cecal bud is formed next the remaining part forms right to third of transverse colon next descending down of cecal bud from the level of liver to the right iliac fossa forms your ascending colon in addition to this in this model we have the developing stomach so this is the developing stomach it is attached to the anterior wall through ventral mesogastrium so this is our ventral mesogastrium this is our dorsal mesogastrium okay so in the ventral mesogastrium what you are seeing here is the 
developing liver so this is the developing liver so this is your developing gallbladder from the pars cystica now important point what you are noting here is due to the rotation of stomach behind that we are seeing the formation of our lesser sac so nicely you can understand so this is the lesser sac lesser sac is present behind the your liver so this part of your ventral mesogastrium extending between liver and stomach is called as lesser omentum so that is your lesser omentum so behind that we are having our lesser sac okay next this is the dorsal mesogastrium so in the dorsal mesogastrium we have the development of spleen so what the development of spleen means the lymphatic nodule accumulation in the dorsal mesogastrium leads to formation of spleen so spleen is formed in the dorsal mesogastrium so this is your abdominal aorta okay so in this model the examiner may ask what are the derivatives of foregut what is the rt of foregut or what is the development of your stomach what is the development of spleen what is the development of liver like that they can ask this as well as your midgut derivatives and its rotation okay thank you